Well, how do that chums to I, Captain of the Steves, and if I just move out the way a bit. You can see there's a development update. Development update for Nightingale. So that puts out a video just momentarily ago, and I have to hit this one up and share with you some of the development updates and feedback from the Nightingale teams. Let's go and hit play on this video. Hey there, ROM walkers. Welcome back to another developer update. We've got a lot to cover today, so hold on to your breeches and let's jump right into what we've been up to for the last couple of weeks. So many of you have probably already seen that we announced our early access release date, February 22nd, 2024. This is a little bit later than we had hoped, so we wanted to take the time in this video to give some details as to why we're shifting, what we're doing with the extra time, and what early access means to us here at Inflection. So firstly, I know we've done this a few times, and trust me, we don't like announcing delays. It's never an easy decision to make, and it does disappoint a lot of people. But we think it's very important for us to fulfill our vision with Nightingale. And what I also like is they've done lots of rounds of playtesting. And each round of playtesting, they've actually taken the feedback from those that have playtested the game and made massive enhancements. And they also put in a delay to move it from Unreal Engine previous to the current Unreal Engine. And you're going to see the difference in the lighting effects and the water effects. It just looks majestically beautiful now. It, it They needed to delay it just for that even, you know? So yeah, when, when there's a delay for purpose and reason, I'm all for it. As well as delivering on some expectations that the community has. Our commitment to quality is very important to us, which is why we're taking the extra time to make things ready for our early access launch. Early access means different things to different studios. For us, it's always been about establishing a solid foundation for player experience, one that we could then build upon with the community. And if you've been part of our testing community, you will have seen that the game has changed over the last year. And all of this is due to the numerous improvements we've made thanks to your feedback. But there are still some rough edges, so this extra time is going to help us in smoothing some of these out, specifically bugs and some quality of life refinements. And even though February will still be an early access launch, we only get one public launch. So that first impression is super important to us. We I love the fact, uh, in fact, she is so sincere with what she's saying there. You can tell there's passion behind what she's saying. So I I've got, I've got, I've got a lot of faith in the team at Inflection Gaming. No delays are frustrating, but this new date means that our team can finish their work, take the holidays to recover, and then come back full force to support early access launch and continue development. So if you saw the release date announcement as it happened, then you know that we went to Gamescom this year. I'll let Steph talk a little bit more about it since she was there on the floor. Gamescom was our first ever in-person community event and also the first time we've ever had a public booth at a conference. I oh my, look at that portal in the background, people. That is so impressive. And the artwork, look, it's freaking, it's double the height of me. That must have cost them a freaking packet. I love it. That is so awesome. And as the people came by to take photos with their life-size portal, enter in for some Intel hardware, and as well as take photos with our cosplayers of both Puck and the lady in bed, who we wow. now call the Scarlet Woman. The portal was made by a team over in Germany, and they did a fantastic job of adapting it to be this showstopper for the floor. And then our cosplayers, Clem and Lara, were a delight to work with. And they also did a <laughs> great job of making their various costumes. I mean, just oh my look at some... Look at that costume. Oh, that's freaking sublime. For these details. We'll make sure to plug some of their social medias in our description as well. So you can wow. look at not only these cosplays, but the other work that they do as well. And then behind closed doors, some of our staff members sat down with content creators and media and gave them a live demo of the game. If you haven't seen some of these wow. impressions online already, we'll plug a couple of them in our description for you. I'll check so those out. So what was a lot of work from various different teams to prepare for and also execute during the actual show. It was an absolute delight to meet so many of you and in person and share the enthusiasm for the game with you. And that Gamescom week was busy for other reasons as well. 
So cool. Those, those cosplayers. From August 25th to September 5th, we had another closed playtest. Over 7,000 realm walkers explored the Fey Wilds, and the most dedicated realm walker clocked in at 194 hours played. As what? 194 hours in such a small space of window? Now that's that that actual window, even if I was lucky enough to be on this, there was a No Man's Sky update and Starfield dropped in that week. I've had a, such a busy time. Always the playtest gave us a lot of things to look at and to focus on. So thank you so much to all of you that jumped into the realms and gave us your feedback. We've been happy to hear that many design updates and tweaks we did for this playtest have resonated with players and our visuals art style music sound design continue look at the waves look at all this this is what i mean with the unreal engine you know it wouldn't have looked like this if they didn't upgrade the unreal engine look at the sunset the reflections off of that oh i oh can't wait to just jump on in even if i'm just running around freaking taking screenshots all day continue to get high praise as for new call outs for this specific play test players got to test a new onboarding flow. And overall, it seems to have reduced friction substantially and helped players get through that early game experience. We saw higher levels of completion and lots of positive feedback, which the team loves to see. When it comes to accessibility... They've added in China! Oh, th that looks freaking awesome. I love like Japanese and Asian sort of oriental influence when in building styles. I mean, doesn't that look beautiful? Heck yes, that's just ticked another box for me. Ability features, we were able to introduce two highly requested ones. The yeah. first allows players to hold the action button in order to continuously do an action. For example, cool. holding down your mouse button to continuously chop a tree instead of clicking Clicking, clicking. Yeah. The second is you can now hold down a button so that you could vacuum items instead of individually going around cool. and picking them up. These two features should help people with mobility issues, but yeah. it's also a great quality of life uh, option to have anyways. Heck yes. Another thing players got to check out was our greatly expanded character creator. While it's still very much a work in progress, here's a sneak peek of what you can expect. Um, I'm not being funny, but pretty much every single face there looked like it was in Madame Two Swords on an extremely hot day. Let me just rewind a little bit. Let's just take a look at the what is this ugly face generator this looks like a horror game well let's hit play but it's also a great quality of life uh, option to have anyways another thing players got to check out was our greatly expanded character creator while it's still very much a work in progress here's a sneak peek of what you can expect you'll not only be able to change eye colors but you'll be able mm. to change individual eye colors also known as heterochromia you like can change that? your character's age we're super excited to show off more features as well as the final character creator functionality in the upcoming months and for those of you that just want to jump into the game and start playing we will also have some character presets that you'll be able to choose from and Sounds good. I mean, the Scarlet Woman, I mean, she looked freaking fantastic, but pretty much every single person inside of that character generator that we saw there looked a bit like Kylo Ren from Star Wars. But yes, hopefully they did say it's still an early, early feature. So maybe they might add in a few more sort of cosmetics there. But the aging thing is quite good. At least I might be able to make a character that looks a little bit rough around the edges like me. I mean, I'm far from looking beautiful. So there you go. I might be able to make me in there since it's an ugly character generator. And then there'll be the things that our team are working on in the coming weeks and months. For the last few playtests, we've allowed previous participants to invite friends to check out the co-op features. The number of people that these folks are allowed to invite range from 1 to 5, depending on the playtest round, as well as key availability. Now this whole process to get a friend in has always been a little bit finicky due to the systems we have in place, but with the last playtest having 10 oh. times the amount of people, we had about 10 times the amount of friends trying to get into this playtest, which meant we had 10 times the amount of issues of previous playtests. So for any of you that were having issues getting your friends into the last playtest that might be watching this, we're auditing our systems to try to figure out what happened there, how to make the process easier, and we also really hope to get your friends in for the next one. 
And then for the game itself, we still have some unfinished textures, UI, and animations that need to be polished off. And while these won't be 100% done for the next playtest, it is an ongoing process to get them all done in time for the early access launch. For this playtest, we heard loud and clear that our bench and augmentation systems for them needed some refinement to make them more approachable to players. We're looking at the options available to us right now, but the idea is to make them less complex and make your workshop more streamlined going forward. On top of I do frequent their Discord quite a lot and I have seen quite a fair bit of feedback around that. It's like if you've built a bench for like your magics and your potions and things, you can put like, I don't know, a crystal ball on there or something, or some sort of mix in mortar and pestle or something. And when you do that, it adds extra en enchantments and enhancements to that desk, but it also opens up a load of recipes. But what I was seeing in feedback was sometimes it's not clear what recipes things will unlock or how you go about doing it to achieve what you need to achieve with inside the tutorial but then earlier i think maribel said that they've sped things up with inside the tutorial so maybe there's a lot of reworking going on there so we're just gonna have to hold out for that i think to see more with that we have some balancing things that we need to do for the late game as well as making our pois or points of interest more rewarding to investigate Another issue that popped up is that the AMD 580 and 590 cards experienced some launch crashes, which they hadn't had before. Our team was able to investigate this specific crash and the reasons why it was causing issues in these specific cards and have been able to update the game to resolve it. So anyone who had these cards and couldn't play in the previous playtest, we hope it's resolved for you in the next one. Well, I've had problems trying to get Starfield to frickin' run on my GeForce NVIDIA chipset. So, yeah, it's not always that easy, is it? With um, multiple sort of setups that they can have on PC. It makes you wonder whether it's easier just to make games for console these days. Several players left feedback this time that they were experiencing lower FPS compared to previous playtests. So our team is investigating as to what could be causing it. Optimization is an ongoing process, so it's going to be another while until we can share expected PC performances for various different build types. So while the previous issue of people not being able to load into their profiles because they were too large has been resolved, we did see some new issues where some folks were having issues when they were trying to go to their respite realm. This error was partially resolved on the server side, uh, halfway through the test or so, and then the remaining errors are being investigated to figure out what was causing them, and hopefully we can have them resolved before the next playtest. Now this isn't all of the feedback and things that we're working on in the coming months, but it's kind of hard to nuance some of these things without everyone having played the game, and also for the sake of brevity. But we will make sure to keep everybody updated as we continue to add things to the game. On a side note, you may have noticed that some community members have not abided by the playtest NDA. So we wanted to give a bit of context when it comes to this topic. Ahead of each playtest, we communicate to players that they might run into technical issues or some systems in the game that aren't quite finished. Quite often, we don't share the exact details or uh, discuss any behind the scenes things that we're working on or planning on changing down the pipeline. We do this because we wanna see what players think about the current state of Nightingale without our influence. Well, Maribel, I would say you guys have been extremely transparent with everything in way of feedback during these development update videos. And it's, it's such a refreshing take from developers to do this. And your communication has been freaking top notch. I must say that it's a shame to hear that some comments have leaked out on the Tinter webs. I mean, yes, there's, there's quite an active discord. There's quite a lot of people that have took place in the play tests over 7,000 or something crazy, like you said earlier. So I suppose the odd thing is going to leak out, but you know what your game and your visuals speak louder than any words. And I think people can see that it's come on leaps and bounds from your very first trailers to now. I'm, I'm very impressed. This is the best way to see whether our assumptions about different gameplay features or mechanics ties with what players are thinking. Most mm -hmm. of the times, we're already aligned. And behind the scenes, we're already working on some of the feedback that we're receiving. But we recognize that sometimes it could be frustrating when players don't know this, what is going to be intended for early access launch or what is in, still in progress. So while we do ask our playtesters not to share their experience, good or bad, 
because it's not a final product, it does happen occasionally. But we do hope that this provides some context behind some of those comments that you might see. I think it does. I think that sort of answered a heck of a lot of questions that you might see. There are some videos up of people that played in the last play test that were allowed to actually put their footage out, um, you know, in line with the NDA and all that sort of stuff. So if you haven't seen those, check those out because they've actually got screen grabs and all sorts. And you'll see that it actually says alpha footage on their screenshots and stuff. But it, it's quite enlightening to hear what they've got to say. Then they do voice some of the good and the bad. And some of that I've heard and seen on the actual Discord myself. So, you know, I'd say it's quite on par and on truth. But at the same time, they've still got till February. So a lot of the niggles and a lot of the feedback that you see in those videos hopefully are going to be addressed. And that's it for this developer update. Now, we might have mentioned another playtest a few times in this video. We mm -hmm. don't have the exact details for that hashed out right now at time of recording. So we recommend that you follow our various social channels, but especially Discord, to keep up to date on that if you're interested. Discord's we awesome, people. We look forward to sharing more updates with you in the coming months. But for now, we say farewell and see you next time. Cool. Well, there we go, people. I'm going to leave that in the old background. I'm just going to mute that, and I'm going to jump on over. So, I honestly think that the actual team over at Inflection Gamings, the way they do these sort of development feedback is the right way to do stuff. It gives them, it give, makes them more personable. It makes them feel like they're actually listening to the people that are actually play testing this game. And you can see that they're very passionate and they're really, really keen to make the good first impression that lasts with the people that pick up the game at launch. I'm definitely going to be jumping in at launch and I'm hoping to do at least a first impressions and a review of this game. And I'm hoping that it's got decent pacing enough that it's, it's not too hectic and it's not too relaxed. It, it's that Goldilocks zone for streamers, you know? We're a, we're a special breed of gamer, really, aren't we? If we're trying to live stream it and also read chat and do everything else at once. It's, it's, it's a bit of a niche sort of area where I aim for myself. I mean, I'm not Dr. Disrespect, you know? I can't swivel on a hat pin and take out 50 people with a machine gun. I'm just not that good. <laughs> So the sort of games I go for are exploration, open worldy, slightly relaxed with elements of, you know, chaos at times just to sort of mix it up a bit. No Man's Sky, Starfield, games like that are perfect for me. This looks like it might be on the same sort of note. And if it is, it's probably going to take permanent resident on my channel and I might do some like exploration videos, hitting up different portal realms. I think it could be quite fun to get, you know, the streamers to, well, the, the, the actual chat to sort of chime in which cards shall I put into the realm thingy and do like a little poll or something put them in bang and generate a world that you guys well, while watching have helped me generate you know so I've got a lot of ideas of things that I can bring to my channel with this game I am hoping that it gets I know it's got like a PC launch there is talk that it might come to console perhaps next gen and if that happens then it's going to open it up a bit more to a wider audience which I think could bring in a few views I mean when you go over and you watch these development updates on Inflection Gamings or you watch their trailers although they've got a fair amount of numbers we're not talking like Starfield numbers we haven't got that sort of generated hype for this game as yet but I think this is a sleeping giant I think this is going to be a gem in the rough and the fact that it's coming out in 2024 it could be up there for nominations by the end of 2024 that's what I'm hoping for people I really do hope that I mean, look at look at the amount of effort that they've put into just this games sort of comms thing. They obviously love their game. They obviously want to make that impact. And if 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 you can help them in any way, even by like sharing this video or even their own video or whatever, do so. You know, if you're passionate about this game, you think that it needs a bigger audience, get sharing people is all I can say. Because I honestly think this this is something special at least i hope it is i mean i haven't jumped in and and i actually you know got my feet wet as per, per se on this one yet but yeah i i am hoping i am hoping that it's it delivers on what you can see inside of these trailers and the fact that i've watched a fair few videos of people that have actually played it during the last play test and seeing their feedback on how it's actually sort of progressed and evolved and that how inflection games have taken their their words on board and put it into this current round of um, testing 
I've, I've, I've got high hopes for it. I've got high expectations. I hope they don't fall short. And, um, or, you know, it, I could jump in. It might not just be for me. You know, I didn't think Elden Ring would work for me. I jumped in and I fell in love with Elden Ring. Who would have thought it? You know, and that game has got chaos. It has got challenges. And I actually, I know I said that I'm not as good as Dr. Disrespect, but I did actually complete that before he did. Yes. <laughs> Just putting that out there. So anyway, people inside the viewerverse, that's everything that I've got for you when it comes to Nightingale in way of updates. I did just a trailer analysis for their review date just the other day, and now this drops on their development update. I have to say, it looks freaking great, doesn't it, now that it's in the latest version of Unreal Engine. Anyway, take care, people. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.